Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kellen here from Start Your Systems, and welcome back to MXGP 2021 Career Mode, episode number three. Today, we are tackling Majora, the MXGP of Italy. We're still on the IXS MXGP Yamaha program. We just won the last Grand Prix at Matterly Basin. Uh, went 4-1 for that victory, so now we pull ourselves to within 13 of the championship leader, Ruben Fernandez, uh, who just took over by finishing third, I believe, in the last GP. Uh, Renault won the opening round at Orleonac after I finished seventh overall. And uh, MXGP class, look at that. Geyser, Hurlings, Cairoli. This is, this is cool to see that it's seemingly pretty accurate to the balance of scale in MXGP and MX2. Uh, you know, like, not to pick on any one rider, but, like, yeah, like, Geyser, Hurlings, Cairoli, Fever, Prado, like, that's that's the top five guys, really, in GPs. So, um, you know, maybe add Seawar in there. Maybe he should be doing a little bit better. But still, like, I feel like this is pretty balanced. And then you look at MX2, and it, it's kind of the same. Like, even Fernandez, he had the points lead at the uh, beginning of the season as well. So um, this, is, this is cool to see how this is all playing out. So we can't do anything yet with our... Our bike or anything like that we're still with the uh the team i can't move my contract yet i'm still still here i don't think i can move my contract at least can i can i just switch on the fly like can i just select uh a sponsor here anything else unlocked yet no none of these <clears throat> um like can i just you cannot sign a contract until the next transfer window boom okay so there you go i guess i should have just Hit it there. All right, so let's go to Majora, which uh, soil-wise, I mean, I've never been there. I've never been to Madderley. I've never been to Orleonoc. But soil-wise, I feel like Majora uh, should be a little bit loamier than Madderley, but a little bit... Uh, it should be the loamiest of the bunch. So I think because of that, uh, it's going to give me the opportunity to maybe go a little bit stiffer with suspension. I think is what I want to try. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll just try my base MX2 setup, and, and that'll give me a feel uh, where I want to go from. So we'll go back to bike setup management. And we'll do this again. Load our base setup. A couple different things in the suspension. I ah, will just leave it from there. And let's hit it. So MX2, race one. We're going to be on the outside here, lined up against our teammate, looks like. Because, uh, again, I don't do qualifying. Man, these gates are really separated. I think I'm just going straight to the outside here. Not even going to worry about what's going on on the inside. And it almost worked. I just missed getting the whole shot and then immediately got taken down into the second corner. All right. Got some work cut out for us here. A lot of ups and downs here at Majora. This track is very hilly. Very uh, pretty as well. I always feel like it's one of the better looking tracks on the MXGP calendar. Obviously hosted the 2016 Motocross of Nations. Hung up there a little bit in the corner. Can't see anything out of the camera. Guess we're going to the outside here at the bottom of the hill. All right, so early runnings. Seems like the AI isn't as difficult as they were on Matterly. It's been a little bit easier to stick with this little group here at the front and try to pass them back. Maybe it's those tight corners at the top of the hill they're just not good at and also the leader is not really getting away as much as they have been oh that's a line right there it's tough too because i have not played any of these tracks yet these inside ruts though are primo when you get them oh, a little bit a little long right there okay that is a huge roller right there I can see now why these guys are stopping a little bit harder at the top of the hills, too. Oh! Corner just falls away. A little bit short on this table. Oh, yeah, we're just sending the singles out to flat, yo. Down past the mechanics area. I mean, I dig it. And up and over the finish line jump. American fans will remember that jump famously for Jason Anderson getting landed on after winning the second race of the Motocross of Nations back in 2016. Miss that rut right there. Cost me a bunch of time. So I didn't actually check whether or not Fernandez has the red plate. I'm not sure if he is ahead of me or not, though. It doesn't look like he is unless he's leading the race right now. Is he behind me? That's gifting. 
Gosh, it is hard to turn at the top of these hills. Not sure if they like did that on purpose. Like it's just harder to lay into it as we get the speed wobbles coming up that hill. Can see now why those guys were going so slow at the tops of the hills on the opening lap. It's like the bike just does not want to turn off the top of these hills. Inside rut right there, get this table. And I feel like you want to just hug right here and try to get over that little roller. Pretty much every time I feel like you're gonna make that little weird kick. Oh yeah, we're sending it again. Send it to the moon, like quite literally. I don't know how you don't fall off right there though. That is so far. Going to the main straight in this first corner. His lap times feel quicker than 135s, to be honest with you. Feels like this track is very fast. We'll go way outside here. Is this better to go out here and get a drive up this hill? Doesn't seem like it's much different. Probably a little bit worse, actually. Alright, so our quest to find a track with an AI is basically just very beatable. So far, I haven't found it. I feel like Matterly, they were they were pretty tough. They were definitely tough at Orleanoc. They're tough here at Majora. So how far am I gonna get before I find a track that I just easily won won it? And is it gonna be because my skill sets are gotten better or is it because AI really are just bad on that track? I really won't know until we get there. But I do know that we are catching the Yamaha teammates of Maxime Renault and Yago Geertz because they are battling each other and it seems like this game very much throws a hindrance at riders who are battling each other. They slow down a lot it seems like. Oh, there we go. It's a little bit smoother than it was last time through there. Try to go past the inside on Maxime Renault. Get this table down the hill. There we go. He shorted it. We're just going to launch past Yago Geertz. Nailed it. All right, so back into third place. Trying to get this championship lead. First little rollers right here. Trying to get to this inside rut, but also trying not to go too fast into it. It's tough, man. Like you really have to go the right speed into these corners, or else it's, you're just gonna blow right over it. And if you're going too slow and you lay into the corner too uh, quickly, it, you can very easily like tuck the front end. It's a it's a balancing act for sure. Oh 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 oh. Okay okay. All right, we're just gonna dance on top of the tough block, I guess. That kind of sucks on the last lap of the race to do that, but. Let's see if I can get back around these guys, maybe still get a fourth out of this as we get those speed wobbles up the hill again. Oh, get that rear tire planted on the outside. Right in the embankment, trying not to make contact with Vial because I feel like that's gonna be the end of both of us if we make contact. On the outside. Nice move in the end over this tabletop, and let's see if we can, oh, look at that. Got that double clean, so I don't need to actually go to the outside all the way down that hill to get that. And I get close enough to Geertz to launch the wall and get him back for third on this last lap. No, I'm, I'm too far back. I'll launch it, but I think, yeah, he's gonna get me. So fourth in MX2 race one here at Majora. So where I'm leveling off at, I feel like I'm top five speed, but it just depends on whether or not I get a start and run up there. So beaten Vandemusik, Geertz, myself, and Vial. First race done here. So let's move through this a little bit quicker so we can get four motos into this career mode video. Semi-automatic or manual transmission? Choose it in the race menu. Um, I'm not gonna change my setup. I feel like I was pretty comfortable there. And we're just going to send it.
Another thing I'm trying to notice is whether or not the track uh, ruts, like, does it reset after every session, or do we still get to run the the same ruts as the last race? It seems like it doesn't reset. It seems like we still got some old ruts on this track, which is kind of cool. Is almost loop out. So I got my second fox hole shot from six races. Can't let these guys get away in the early running, so we gotta try to make quick passes. While I can use that outside line that's been working for me, but it's gonna just get me off the track here a little bit. Oh wow, he checked up really hard on that inside, but then it seems like he was just trying to get to that little inside rut. All right, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Sorry, Yago. Gonna muscle you out of the way a little bit and try to get to beat before he gets out of here. Talked to Jed Beaton when I was over in Italy. Very nice dude. And just signed with the FNH Racing Kawasaki team for his MXGP class rookie season next year. All right, so led the first lap, whole shot. Things going well. Now, can I hold on and win this race? And another 4-1. <laughs> Loving these four ones, I guess. It's U turns, man. They're so tight. They're really tough uh, to actually turn the bike because you're just trying to ride that that balance of not turning too hard and tucking the front end, but also trying to get some good traction out of the corner it actually is like a real challenge I feel like I mean those of you that have already played the game so far maybe you're uh, you know trying to figure out what I'm talking about a little bit but it's it's not that easy to like find the ragged edge of like you know getting the bike into the corner but not leaning too far because then you'll just either tuck the front end or turn too tight and then like ride over the banking on the exit of the corner uh, but then if you charge into the corner a little bit too deep, you'll just go right over the rut. So, uh, like I said, balancing act, you know. Oh, the side of the track a little bit here. Starting to get this section down a little bit better. I do think it's a little stupid that you can pretty much just launch this guy to flat. That rear end dancing coming on the start straight. All right, well, who is uh, right there? It's still beaten. Definitely keeping me honest. Like I said though, it doesn't doesn't feel like the AI they don't let you go, man. You it's it's tough to get just a sizable lead here on realistic difficulty. Whew. A little kick coming over that single right there. Sketching me out just a bit. Get over that double cleanly this time. All right, coming down to the white flag, and we got a bit of a gap going. Feeling good about this one this time. I said that last time at Madeley, and then immediately crashed it away, so who knows? It's a good lap, though. Felt like that was probably my strongest lap. I'm not sure if that 135 one is mine. But definitely did pull away from beaten by a decent bit that lap. All 
I'm just kind of in a groove right now. I feel like it's kind of nice to just flow with the game a little bit and let let these corners come to you, lay into the ruts pretty nicely. It seems like that first section of the track, AI are definitely better than whatever I'm able to do. And I didn't feel like I was flubbing the corners too bad or anything like that. here it just seems like I got got it much more figured out than the AI so there's sections maybe it's not tracks this time maybe it's just you know there's sections of the track that you're better than the AI and there's some sections that they're better than you but hey I think that's a, a positive step because definitely there were tracks in MXGP 2020 and before that you were just it wasn't even close like you just did stuff that the AI basically couldn't do and there were almost no challenges. We're gonna come through and take the win. Another dub. Now, am I gonna come out of here with the championship lead? That's the real question. I don't think so, but Beaton actually is not gonna, he's gonna deny me of the overall victory. He goes one, two, gets me by four points. So where are we championship wise? Second place, I don't get to, I don't get to stand with the bike if I finish second. I kind of wish they did a podium celebration. I think that would make a little bit more sense for this game, but I digress. All right, so myself and Beaton now out front in the championship. He is now 13 ahead of me, and we are clear of the pack a little bit. Van der there in third. He's four back of me. Uh, Fernandez also right there, but then Geertz, Renault, Vial, it starts to tail off a little bit. So, hey, Jed Beaton, championship leader. I got to try to dethrone the Aussie. All right, moving up to level 16. Getting those all taken care of. I'm curious when the contract window opens, ends, whatever you want to call it. Not sure how long it goes for, but it seems like we're still not there. Still don't know what these career challenges are. I'm sure you guys have already told me by this point because I'm recording these videos well in advance. Uh, so apologies that I probably haven't read your comments on some of my first couple videos so far. But we are now moving on to Oss in the Netherlands. This is supposed to be a sand track. So now uh, this is going to be really curious for me because I've only tried a uh, real Lissardo, which is also a sand track. And it was not a very sandy track. In my opinion, there was no deep bumps. There was not ruts. There wasn't, you know, just gnarly sandiness and the traction didn't feel like that of sand. So I'm very curious to feel uh, what this feels like, we'll go to our base setup again. I'm going to go a little bit softer overall in the rear throughout, I think, maybe. Uh, so we'll go a little bit stiffer in the front on the springs, a little bit softer in the rear, and then one click down on each of these and just see if that feels any better. And here we go, already on to race four of 12 in the MX2 campaign. I don't know how long we can stay in the MX2 class or what have you, but it is time for the MXGP of the Netherlands from Oss. Just gonna try my technique that I used in Majora outside all the way in and just hope it works out. Kinda does, everybody ran a little bit deep and I got a little bit kicked around there, but we're gonna come out of it in second. So Maxime Renault takes the race lead. I got Isaac gifting down the left side here and he is gonna get me back for second place. But yeah, you can already see this is not looking very sandy to me. I'm really curious to see what the track looks like after, you know, a couple laps though of it being weathered in because this is not your telltale signs of sand at all. It doesn't feel like sand traction either. It doesn't feel like I'm getting bogged down whatsoever uh, by anything, which is weird because I feel like the milestone people with the Supercross games have figured out sand. They figured out how to make it so that sand actually does hold you back. Now, I guess the one thing I can say about it is that I'm not going from dirt to sand necessarily on this track, so I won't be able to feel that comparison, but yeah, so far a little bit disappointed in the sand aspect of this. It needs to be bumpier, it needs to be, uh, you know, ruddier, it needs to be grippier, I guess, it needs to hold you back more, whatever you want to call it. it needs to feel like sand, it needs to feel like you're, you're bearing the bike in it a little bit, so. Doesn't feel like that to me, at least. That inside probably is very much OP. Right, down past the mechanics area here.
Trying to work back up to Maxime Renault. Don't let him get away here. Oh, that's a little bit farther than I wanted to go on that jump. That's all right. Up over the finish line jump. All right, so now we're going to get a little bit more telltale signs. What does the track look like after a lap? Well, I do know that Maxime Renault is leaving the door wide open into this first corner. I don't know where he thinks he's going. All right. I mean, it. you know, it's... It's wearing in, but I honestly feel like the ruts and everything at, at Orléans Oc were deeper. And that is totally not going to be accurate to real life, obviously. Orléans Oc, very hard base of a track. Whereas a sand track, you would expect the ruts to be worn in a little bit. And again, the ruts don't really affect anything. So it's not necessarily that that I'm, I'm keying into. I'm just aesthetic value wise, you know, it just doesn't even like look sandy. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that, I think, but I digress. All right, so, so far this looks like it's probably the easiest track for the AI as well. Wasn't too difficult to catch and pass Renault. A little high centered there on the rut, but able to correct it. It seems like what probably is the factor with this track and why I'm going to be better than the AI on it is that there's a lot of like switchback corners, and it seems like the way that the ruts have been laid out by Milestone, and I'm guessing that's probably done a little bit with AI tracking, is uh, you know the ruts in the corners don't necessarily flow very well to what the switchback would suggest like you would think that they would apex the corner a little bit better than it's showing and i'll tell you what i mean by that next time i get to one of those sections but i mean you know we went onto the star straight for example and renault went look at you can see where renault went <laughs> and then the ai looks like they do it like halfway down the straightaway as well they just go way to the outside and yeah this is uh this is looking a lot easier to try to win this race than the other tracks that I've done so far. So uh, I, I guess there's not as many switchbacks on this track than I was thinking of, but it's just when you have those like kind of chicanes almost where it doubles back on itself and you can clearly see like there's a faster way to go through it but the AI doesn't look like they quite understand that maybe all right as the track gets a little bit more roughed in with the the road I do feel like it's looking a little bit more like a sand track not enough to really make me feel like that's the case but definitely a little bit more like it. So it's this corner specifically right up here that I'm talking about. So not that U-turn, but this one right here, you can see that like, it looks like the AI swings way wide. 100% you should just go like inside right here, inside right here. That is way faster than, you know, taking that as if like you're following the actual racetrack more or less. Maybe the AI looks like they're getting the hang of it as I look at the background, but yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe that's just me noticing that and those guys aren't or something. I'm not sure. Definitely pulling away with relative ease on the field here. But this is another fun track. Now that I'm getting the hang of it, I feel like this is a pretty fun track to find a good flow on, connect the corners. Whoop. Laid into that corner a little bit too much. Can I get that triple? Oh, man, I'm sure on a 450 that's doable. I also have seen a couple people, and again, this is I'm recording this well in advance uh, when you know the first two career mode videos have gone out, so I'm sure some of you guys have already brought it up in the first two career mode videos. But I'm seeing some people uh, talk about this game looking like it's it's like you're riding in slow motion. And what I'll counter with that, and I, I don't necessarily disagree with you, I do feel like it, to some degree it does look like it's going a little bit too slow in spots, 
Uh, but my counter to that is that you have to understand that like the top speed that anybody ever gets going on a motocross track is like maybe 60 miles an hour. So that's 85 kilometers an hour for those of you watching from Europe. That's not that fast in the grand scheme of things. Like if you're playing an F1 game, you're playing a MotoGP game, you're going like three times at minimum that speed almost everywhere. And it should look like you're hauling butt in those games. So in these games, I'm actually okay with them looking like they're going a little bit slower because then it, at least for like a, a consumer standpoint, it actually looks a little bit more like, I guess, realistic in that regard. Cause I don't particularly love when motocross games are like unrealistically fast. And then, you know, if someone's like picking that game up and for the very first time they go to a motocross race and they're expecting like hot wheels level intense speed and they're let down by more or less how slow people are going. I don't want them to feel that way. So, um, I don't mind that this is like a little bit slower, so to speak, than what it should be, I guess. Uh, so it looks like beaten was six in that first moto, which means I just gained 10 points on him. So now if I can win this second moto, I have a chance of leaving here with the red plate, which I am going to be stoked about. So let's send it. Inside gate, I think I want to go like three in. And let's see if we can rip a hole shot. Ah, oh, shifted too early off the gate, and that just killed all my momentum. But these guys are going to push a little bit wide, so I'm just going to sneak down the inside and still grab the hole shot. And now it is absolutely going to be time for me to say adios. So this is going to bring up a, an interesting topic of discussion about the AI a little bit. I, th I feel like through three rounds in this series, as Yago Gertz is going to pass me back and try to make my points sound ridiculous. And I really do feel like the track doesn't um, get reset in between motos. I think that's, that's really cool. Looks like the ruts are still all there from the previous race. I like that a lot. I like that feature a lot, a lot, actually. Uh, but what I was about to say is that if I win this race, that means that in the first four races of my career, just getting a feeling for this game, just trying to understand it on realistic difficulty, etc., I'll basically be 50% in wins. Now, that sounds like probably too much for trying to like just learn the game and already eight motos in. I'm at a half a win rate on the highest difficulty with advanced physics. But, you know, I'm a avid motocross fan enthusiast. I've played all of the MXGP games up to this point. I feel like I should adapt pretty well to the game right away. But, of course, you still want to see the AI be a little bit tougher maybe. Um, but I will say that I, I feel like up until this race, the AI have been rather difficult. You give them a chance to start out front, and they make life very challenging. So... Um, I've been pleasantly surprised with the uh, challenge of the AI so far, and I'm curious to hear more about what you guys think as these videos come out. I'll probably be about four episodes deep into career mode before I start seeing feedback from you guys. So, again, just trying to you know keep an open, open wall here a little bit so you guys understand that I haven't seen any feedback you guys have had about actually playing the game to this point. This is me just pre-recording all this stuff. I'm actually going to be in Florida when all these videos come out, so I won't be able to uh, record anything. But yeah, maybe you guys uh, maybe you guys have already offered a bunch of feedback about that and what you guys think about the AI, but that uh, that's something I'm really keen to get a little bit more into because obviously for those people that are trying to play this game single player, and are really putting a, a lot of time into either the career mode or just, you know, playing single player, I guess. Um, you know, you want the AI to be challenging enough that it keeps you coming back for more. It keeps you wanting to, to do those single player races. And, uh, you know, try to get better. Try to beat the AI. So, curious what uh, the general consensus is going to be for sure. At least from my point of view, a little bit disappointed how easy they are on this track. Very happy, though, with how challenging they have been up to this point no question about it they have not been exactly a walk in the park so we're going to finish off this race and that'll be it for the video for today so just trying to steal that points lead away from jed beaton 
be able to rock the red plates on our bike. But then maybe we're going to move to a new team after this. I'm not sure. I feel like it's either going to be four races or six races will be the contract window. So we might be on a new team after this. Oh, you're in sliding a little bit through that corner. I will tell you, though, there are people that end up getting frustrated with these games and, and feel, you know, they say, like, oh, you know, they suck, they, the physics are wonky, just play MX bikes, whatever. What I ultimately care about in a motocross game is whether or not I'm having fun. If I'm having fun, other people must be having fun, too. And I'll tell you what, I'm having fun playing this game. This is is a fun challenge. It's, you know, definitely not the easiest MXGP game I've ever played. Uh, so far, the AI have been tough on some tracks, have been easy on others, I guess, but, you know, that's, that's a balancing act that they have to find. And I'm definitely keen to try the rest of the tracks and try all the other features that this game has to offer because there's a lot more than the career mode, and we're going to get into that with more videos that you guys are probably see rolling out on the channel this week but uh, like I said I'm, I'm having fun and to me that's that's the biggest aspect of it all it's a video game I want to log on I want to have fun and I'm having fun so uh, fun factor for me we're, we're giving it a plus right now I'm on the positive side of the fun factor <laughs> all right two laps to the end coming down to uh, get the white flag here and just a moment already opened up a, a nice gap and honestly i'm not putting too much thought into it but like i said this is a fun track this has got some good flow to it once you get the the groove rolling a little bit it's fun that you can kind of like launch these out to flat a little bit that jump right there is really cool i, I know, i'm gonna try to scrub it next time by and get a really cool little scrub off on it Get up to the top of the hill here. Just trying to carry speed. Get this triple. Oh, just a little bit short. Some good speed though through these corners, feeling, feeling the flow, feeling froggy. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but man, the aesthetics of this game, pretty damn good. I'll give it a PDG for a, a rating. Not gonna give it a number. Just gonna say they're pretty damn good. This is, uh, I feel like a, a step up for them this year graphically which I know some people are just like who cares just focus on the physics make a better game whatever but you know what you still have to try to compete with some AAA titles to a degree and this game graphically looks very very good in my opinion and that's not to say that MX bikes doesn't look good or MX sim with peaked out graphics doesn't look good just saying this game looks good. Oh, I tried to get a scrub off, and I was going the wrong direction. I thought about it too late. All right, here we go. Wrapping it up with a dub. Wish we did a fist pump or something other than just a straight air. But 1-1, one, one, baby. All right, so 1-1, one, one, attacking Dutch windmills. Unlock that achievement. First 1-1 one, one also, so I don't know what that means. Uh, but we outscored Beaten by 21 points, which means... Ladies and gentlefish, boys and girls, I am the red plate holder. Look at that. I'm even holding the red plate. I'm not sure if that's what it's signaling or not, but I am the red plate holder. Yeah, boys. Look at that. Up ahead by eight points now. So going from finishing seventh at the first Grand Prix to winning the second and then finishing second at the third and now winning the fourth. Now I am the championship leader. First of two wins on the season. 
I think the team's going to be pretty stoked on that. Uh, up to level 17. Almost up to level 18, I guess, now. So, is the contract window open? No. Looks like we have to get through probably two more GPs before we get there. Uh, but we are getting closer to unlocking some more stuff because of that. Uh, you have to get to Prestige Level 20 to get the Wraths Motorsports team, the SM Action Racing team, uh, the Team Honda Asa Motor team unlocked. So a couple more. What do you need a factory? So uh, 30 to get factory in the 250s. And then unlocked, unlock Wiseco, Athena, FC Moto, Henson, Vertex. Uh, when I get to Prestige 20. And then GoPro, iPhone, and Recluse is when you get to level 30. So we're getting there. We are getting there. And we're having fun along the way. But that has been episode 3 of Career Mode and MXGP 2021. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you guys did, please be sure to like. It really helps me out a ton if you guys do that. Uh, get into the comment section below if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns that you want to raise to me. I'm happy to answer them uh, for any and all of you guys that have uh, some concerns still or anything that you want to talk about. But we're moving on to episode four next time. And we'll take on Locket with our red backgrounds on our IXS MXGP team Yamaha. So thanks guys for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. So long for now.